This is the Earth's final frontier. Vast, dark, and silent. A mysterious world deep beneath the Florida Peninsula. A hidden world of haunting beauty without air or light. A world that time forgot. Only now will its secrets be revealed as an elite team of divers prepares to explore the uncharted waters of the Florida Aqua Caves. The Florida Peninsula. In many ways, a water world all its own. A river snakes through dense forest to its source, one of Florida's extraordinary freshwater springs. A remarkable eight billion gallons of water rise from the springs daily. And yet, the true mysteries of Florida's underwater world lie even deeper still. Ninety percent of the state's drinking water, some of the purest water in the world, flows from the underground springs. These freshwater reserves are home to a world of unique wildlife. Manatees seek the warmth of spring water all year round, following it up the river in winter. and an ancient gar can date its ancestors back over 200 million years. This ultra-pure water is the wellspring of all life across the peninsula, having nurtured these lush ecosystems throughout the ages. But where does so much pure water come from? It is a popular but extremely dangerous area, attracting serious divers from all over the world to explore the vast network of serpentine tunnels beneath the springs. The water is crystal clear, with near perfect visibility, an astonishing 160 feet. A hole almost 23 feet in diameter opens up at the bottom of the spring. This is the entrance to the spring's primary underwater tunnel. Torrents of water pour out of the tunnel into the spring. Progress is slow and difficult. Once inside, a narrow cave opens up, stretching out horizontally far into the distance. It is a world of utter darkness, where absolutely no light enters. At once haunting, yet serene. Out of nowhere, a ghostly crustacean falls to the silty cave floor. An albino crayfish. Living all their lives in total darkness, these bizarre creatures lack eyes and pigment entirely. Nearby are the fossil remains of a much more forbidding creature, a four to five ton mastodon, ancient cousin of the elephant that roamed this area during the last ice age. Fossils from tens of thousands of years ago remain perfectly preserved. Moving deeper into this unknown world, the cave splits into many different tunnels at an underwater intersection with an official traffic sign forbidding public diving beyond this point. In Florida, 
Over 300 divers have lost their lives exploring this intricate maze of underwater tunnels. Most of them lost their way and ran out of air before they could find their way back to the surface. One highly His name is George Irvine, a 48-year-old stockbroker. Almost every weekend, he gathers the most accomplished divers from all over the United States and goes where no man has ever gone before. Irvine is the leader of a project with special permission from the state to map Florida's complex network of underwater tunnels. The team has 80 divers, but only the most experienced divers do the longest and most difficult underwater explorations. The remaining divers make up an extensive support team that helps prepare the equipment and monitor safety. The project has all these battery-powered scooters that allow research teams to maneuver through deep passageways at three times normal speed. Team members come from varied backgrounds, ranging from scientists to businessmen. How much, how much slack we got on the rope that's fabulous? Well, Since 1990, when he started researching the underwater tunnels, Irvine has made over 2,000 dives and he holds many world records for exploring some of the longest underwater caves on the planet. It's like walking in the woods and wanting to see what's over the next hill. You just want to go a little further and see what's there. And when you do that, you want to see what's on over the next hill and over the next hill and around the next corner and behind the next tree. It's just, uh, it's curiosity. Their laboratory is in the Florida Panhandle an area that stretches over 450 miles to the Gulf of Mexico, the Woodville Karst Plain. More than 50 springs have been discovered here. George's goal is to explore every one and to create the definitive map of this vast network of underground channels. Their next location will be Indian Spring, only about 65 feet in diameter. It's one of Florida's smaller springs. To document these remarkable expeditions, a film crew will follow the team as far into the veins as the less experienced divers are allowed to go. They're expecting a dangerous dive, with reports that deep beneath the spring is a cave so immense it can hold a 747. Our crew has first dive in one of these springs. Normally, this would be too dangerous for our crew. We'll only be allowed in the spring, accompanied by the research team. At a depth of 115 feet, there is a small hole at the base of the spring wall. This is the entrance to the underwater tunnel. It's a tight fit with tanks, and the film crew just barely makes it through with their bulky high-def cameras. ...on the low ceiling and not to touch the bottom and kick up dirt that would cloud up the water. The ceiling is pure white. Like many of the caves, it's made of limestone.
we are progressing deeper. But when you dive through an area surrounded by walls, you start to lose feeling of depth and direction. It gets very claustrophobic. The team is now 500 feet into the underwater tunnel at a depth of 140 feet. Erosion of the limestone is especially severe in this area, resembling a falling rock zone with debris piled high on the cave floor. Falling limestone is always a danger in these tunnels, posing a serious threat to divers, with some of the rocks the size of automobiles. Past the debris field, a huge space opens up. The walls of the cave suddenly drop away, and they are floating in nothingness. A huge cave appeared before us. We had never seen anything like it. Being weightless too, it was almost like floating in space. We lost all perspective. It was hard to tell up from down. This cave is so huge that no one to this day has been able to film it. The legend is true. It is big enough for 747. Water that runs in these tunnels originated as rainwater a long time ago. It soaked into the soil, percolated into the underlying rocks, then seeped down into the underground veins. It can take tens of thousands of years for water from a storm to drain through the earth, down into one of these tunnels. The earth acts as a natural filtration system that keeps the water clear and pure. Water this pure can only be created over such a long period of time. Under a great sea. Coral and shells settle to the ocean floor to create the limestone layer. Then, during the Ice Age, the sea level lowered, creating land. Over hundreds of thousands of years, as rain fell onto the land, the limestone gradually eroded, forming the underwater tunnels that stretch below the earth in the depths of Florida's limestone springs. Over time, Irvine's elite team of divers plans to explore and map every known spring, taking several months to research each location
George Irvine works out for two hours each morning in preparation for the weekend's arduous adventure. The dives are dangerous and exhausting work. The divers must be in excellent physical condition. It's not uncommon for the total diving time to last for more than 10 hours. And that's if all goes well. In October of 1991, the project's original sponsor, Parker Turner, was buried in a landslide and killed. George Irvine was diving in the team ahead of Turner's and made it out of the cave just in time. Had he been delayed even a little, he would have been killed as well. If I'd been four minutes later, I would have been trapped behind that restriction. I never would have made it through. I'm much bigger than those guys. I never would have fit through. I would have been dead. What did this cave's all about? After the accident, George was determined that no one from the project would ever fall victim again. He constantly checks and rechecks all safety procedures. Divers are chosen according to the difficulty of the expedition. Only the very best tackle the most dangerous explorations. They are supported by team members in the water and on land. The support divers are always standing by at the surface and ready to respond in case of an emergency. I think that we've put together enough of a sophisticated organization and a safety plan that I'm not concerned about getting killed by virtue of the dives that I'm doing. It's just something I do. I don't, I don't worry about it. I don't think about it. I, I organize it and plan for it and execute it. Research teams always have at least two or three divers. How far they can go is limited only by their physical endurance and the capacity of their tanks. Each dive is a race against time. When entering a new tunnel, they use a rope to measure the distance from the entrance. It also orients their forward progress and acts as their lifeline in case of accident. The second diver is responsible for securing the rope to the rock face so it can't become detached, which could leave them stranded without any idea how to exit the maze. The team leader, normally George, gathers the data on each spring. At each point, the rope bends. He measures their depth and uses a compass to mark location and direction. Other team members enter the data into the computer. Later, they'll create maps of the underwater tunnels for every spring they explore. So far, the project has investigated 35 springs in the Woodville Karst Plain. Their research has revealed that underwater tunnels connect 27 of the springs across more than 20 miles. Farther south, they reach the Wakula Spring, one of the most active in the region. A dense forest blankets the ground around its surface. Four billion gallons of water is propelled into the Wakula Spring every day. This is the largest volume of any spring in the Woodville Karst Plain. Beneath the spring, they hope to find a vast underwater tunnel, the source of such massive amounts of water. Research in the Wakula Spring will be extremely dangerous. Wakula is the deepest spring in the area, 
divers will be buffeted by intense water pressure at the lower depths. The spring itself is 150 feet deep. A 15-story building would fit easily inside of it. The tunnel plunges even deeper still to a depth of almost 300 feet. At those depths, water pressure compresses the gas in tanks, which reduces the tank's capacity. The pressure at 300 feet is 10 times the pressure at the surface, so divers have one-tenth the capacity in their tanks. The greater the depth, the longer it takes to surface, because divers have to decompress slowly from that pressure. Uh, this is going to be deeper than we've been so far. But, Safety uh, is paramount. Nothing changes other than a little the camera deeper. crew will only Real accompany careful. the team part of the uh, way. It's real critical that we watch our time and our gas. Our gas is going to be going so much faster than it has up until now, because we are deeper. An extra meter is attached to the tanks to carefully monitor the amount of time each diver has left. The descent feels like a free fall. They quickly drop 150 feet to the bottom of the spring and locate the entrance of the underwater tunnel. We usually go down only to 140 feet. So from here, we were diving into depth that we've never experienced before. What looks like a crack in the spring wall is the entrance to the underwater tunnel. The massive amount of water that surges into the Wakula Spring all travels through this narrow hole. The team forces its way into the vein. Once inside, a gentle slope leads down to a depth of 230 feet. As the water pressure increased, we started to feel our diving suits press against our bodies. Ten minutes into the tunnel, we finally arrived at a depth of 290 feet. When we breathed in, the air from the tank started to feel sticky. As water pressure condenses the gas in the tank, it becomes denser and feels thicker. The tunnel forks into two paths, one to the right, one to the left. It's as if they've arrived at the entrance to an underwater maze. Divers from the project will continue exploring deep into both forks. But this is as far as the amateur divers in the film crew will be allowed to go. At these depths, resurfacing can be even more difficult than the dive itself. Once they emerge from the tunnel into the spring, their ascent will take two hours to allow for decompression. Decompression means readjusting your body to less pressure as you resurface. At great depths, compressed gas in the tanks fuses into the bloodstream. By surfacing too quickly, the air in the bloodstream would expand, forming bubbles. The result can be fatal. The longer they dive, the longer it takes to decompress. And so the divers wait, with patience being more than a virtue. Here, it can save your life. The project team has spent nine months mapping the Wakula Spring as part of the overall effort to create computer reproductions of every tunnel they explore. Starting at 150 feet, the tunnel slopes down and plateaus at a depth of 290 feet. 
the camera crew heads back, accompanied by members of the support team. From here, a complex web of underwater tunnels snakes in all directions away from the Wakula Spring. Up to now, the project has identified 13 tunnels in the network. They've already explored 18,000 feet, almost three and a half miles, into the largest tunnel, a world record at the time. But it stretches much further still, further than they ever imagined, and they Now the project team believes a bizarre incident 25 miles away may be connected to their research. At about 4,000 acres, Lake Jackson was a quarter the size of Manhattan Island. Then suddenly, in September of 1999, something astonishing happened. All the water disappeared in just two days. This is Lake Jackson before the water disappeared, shot by a local resident. This is Lake Jackson today, photographed from the same location. A Florida Geological Survey team has returned to the drained lake to investigate. They explore a hole right in the bottom of the lake and a cave that drops 40 feet straight down. From there, the cave stretches out horizontally. Like many in the area, it shows the classic signs of chronic limestone erosion. Off the cave stretches an underwater tunnel below the lake. The geological survey emerges from the cave with a working hypothesis. For years, rocky debris and possibly one enormous boulder plugged the hole in the lake bottom. But after several years of drought, the level of underground water slowly lowered causing the debris that was plugging the lake to lose its support from below and eventually fall through the hole. That opened the floodgates. The lake water quickly emptied out through the tunnel. Then, one month after the water disappeared from Lake Jackson, Strange things start to happen at some of the springs in the region. At the Wakula, the level of the spring suddenly rises and its previously clear water turns cloudy. The moment George enters the water, he realizes how green and cloudy it has become. Visibility is less than half of what it had been on his last dive here. And two, the force of the water rushing out of the tunnel is so strong, George finds it difficult to proceed. He decides the dive is too risky and calls it quits until he can prepare his team for the more perilous conditions. The team hypothesizes that the water in the spring turned cloudy when Lake Jackson emptied. And all those billions of gallons of water poured through an unknown tunnel into the Wakula, 25 miles to the south. Their research suggests that the underwater tunnels originating from the Wakula stretch primarily toward the south. Perhaps as far as the Gulf of Mexico, 15 miles away. Here, a vast amount of underground water springs out from the ocean floor. 13 underwater springs have been found in just a 1,500-foot radius.
Water rushes out of a crack in the ocean floor with the force of an erupting volcano. And it's difficult for even the most experienced and most fit divers to proceed. Eventually, the team hopes to connect one of the Wakula's tunnels directly to a spring in the Gulf of Mexico. Project research has also developed a more troubling hypothesis. In recent years, an aquatic plant called a hydrilla has been multiplying at an alarming rate at the Wakula. It's now so dense, it's beginning to destroy the ecosystem at the spring. Their alarming new hypothesis, pollution is being spread through Florida's vast network of underwater tunnels. One clue to the mystery is the water's unnaturally high level of nitrates, a common ingredient in fertilizers used for lawns and golf courses. And yet, Wakula Spring is surrounded by dense forest. There are no homes or golf courses anywhere nearby. So where could these nitrates come from? State environmental officials believe they have seeped into the ground from miles and miles away and traveled to the Wakula through a still undiscovered underwater tunnel but they need proof. To regulate against the pollution, they must first demonstrate that the spring is connected by underwater tunnels to an area where the fertilizer is used. Cave divers will enable us to do a much better job of protecting Florida springs because they're showing us uh, information that, that no one else can show us. There's no technology at this point that can tell us about those caves uh, underground. After eight months, the cloudy waters of the Wakula finally clear up. But now the project's research has taken on a new urgency. The longest tunnel the team has found branching off the Wakula is 18,045 feet, about three and a half miles. But project members now suspect another even longer tunnel could stretch as far as the Gulf of Mexico. Siphoning outflow. Yet at Fish depths of almost 300 feet, where air tanks hold one-tenth of their normal capacity, the exploring the longest of these underwater tunnels and could now, prove beyond reach. I research and corrected this one. Yeah. The plan so calls for an extensive out. support team to dive ahead of George and his partner and to place extra tanks and scooters along the way. But I never bothered until... 6 a.m. The support team starts lining up the equipment on the shore. Preparations for the difficult and dangerous dive begin to take on the feel of a military operation. Among the extra gear the support team will place along the dive route are 86 tanks and 34 scooters for two divers. The complex expedition begins with the 20 diver support team taking the extra equipment deep into the main tunnel. They'll place the tanks and scooters at intervals of about 1,300 feet, or about a quarter of a mile apart. Altogether, they're creating eight pit stops where George and his partner can rest briefly and take on fresh equipment. When the support team has completed the first phase of the dive, the lead team will penetrate about 9,000 feet into the tunnel, switching tanks and scooters along the way. From there, they will begin to check the primary vein for any new forks they could have missed on previous dives. 10 a.m., George heads for the shore. You want to get shallow and sit down? Nah. Specially designed rebreathing tanks will allow these expert divers to stay submerged up to five times longer at extreme depths. What's wrong with it, man? What happened? George's partner is Jared Jablonski. They have been exploring Florida's underwater tunnels together for almost a decade. 
For this dive, Project Scooters have been outfitted with cameras and lights so that George and Jared can continue to film after the camera crew has been sent back. A final moment of quiet reflection before a long and dangerous dive. It has been two years since they dove deep into the Wakula. Will they be able to find a new tunnel? Will it lead to the Gulf of Mexico? The water of the Bakula Spring is crystal clear once again, with visibility over 160 feet. In water this clear, the film crew's high-definition cameras produce some of the most astonishing underwater photography ever shot. At the surface, the support team stands by. 20 divers from the project and other emergency personnel are ready for any problems that could arise. When planning the expedition, George estimated a dive of five hours to cover six or seven miles. George and Jared arrive at the 9,000 foot point, almost two miles in one hour. They quickly change tanks and scooters and are off again. They are moving more slowly now, painstakingly studying the tunnel for any signs of another branch they may have missed. At 14,000 feet, the film crew must turn back. Everything now is being shot by cameras attached to the scooters. From here, George and Jared proceed alone. Fourteen thousand two hundred and sixty-five feet into the tunnel, the divers find a marker they left on their last dive, and they notice a small hole near their marker. On their previous dive, but suddenly, the bright lights from the camera reach deep into a side cave that stretches much further than they ever imagined. Meanwhile, up above, hours have passed and the support crew can do nothing but wait and wonder. George and Jared have found a new tunnel, but more surprises await them inside. They only proceed about 400 feet into this new tunnel when the walls suddenly disappear. They shake their lights up and down, left and right, but just more nothing. They have discovered an enormous new cave, a power cave, so huge, it's dizzy. The feeling you get is, is like being in outer space because no floor, no wall, no ceiling. No, you can't see ahead. All you see is water everywhere you look. And then I was thinking, I'm being allowed to see what no one else can see. And there's got to be a reason for that. Jared, in the lead, anchors his rope along the wall. But no matter how far they swim, the cave keeps opening up, as though there is literally no end in sight. After they proceed about 1,500 feet into the new tunnel, Jared stops. He's out of rope. Coming up from behind, George can't help laughing. He asked me, what do you want to do? I handed him another reel. <laughs> and we both started laughing, you know, because we're already three miles into a cave and it's already ridiculous. We've already added, you know, at that point, 1,800 feet of line off this reel. 
And of course, what do you want to do? I want to like explore some more cave. George and Jared are exhausted. It's already been a very long dive, but they use the new rope from George as an inspiration to push even further into the cave. Today, the project will add a major new tunnel to the map and a new 640 feet. The new power cave they've discovered seems headed south. If the tunnel continues in this direction, it would reach the Gulf of Mexico, only 12 miles due south. Back at the surface, the support team eagerly awaits the divers' safe return. They know, virtually to the minute, how long George and Jared can survive. It is long past their scheduled return time and perilously close to the point their tanks must be empty. Then, round midnight, the support crew sees light ascending from the depths below. And eight hours to decompress the dive George predicted would last five hours took a total of 14. Yay, new cave! New cave! New cave. All right. We got the gas, so... That's a beautiful sight, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's bigger than the main tunnel, though. Yeah. Yeah, and it starts all over again. <laughs> it has taken the forces of nature hundreds of thousands of years to create Florida's vast network of springs and underwater tunnels. Deep beneath these springs, there is a world of magnificent mystery, with many underwater tunnels and power caves still waiting to be discovered. And on the surface, the blessing of pure, crystal clear water. With more on the quest to find answers in the uncharted waters of the Florida Aqua Caves.